Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking about six things that you can do during a full moon. are often a really amazing source of energy. A lot of people, whether they are witches or not, are really attracted to the full moon. It's something that always seems to draw us in. Even as children, we're obsessed with the idea of the moon following us when we're in cars, or the fact that the moon looks so huge in the sky sometimes. A lot of us are drawn to the moon, and witches especially have a very close connection to the moon, especially if you are a follower of the lunar cycles. Now within some traditions, celebrations surrounding the full moon are called espats and they're often done with groups or covens where meetings come together and talking happens and rituals are done. But what can you do if you're not part of a group that does these espat rituals? What can you do even by yourself, even from your own home? That's largely what I'm going to be talking about today. Now there are so many different things that you can do for the full moon. These are just six of my top favourites that I do myself or that I have done in the past that I think could really help you guys in your own celebrations. So the first thing is that you can undertake blessing rituals. Now lots of people will do spell work and ritual during the full moon, usually for a very specific purpose. But if you don't have anything in mind that you need to do, but you still want to do a working on the full moon while the energy is still very, very high, you can always do a blessing ritual. The idea of a blessing ritual is that you just bring that positive, uplifting energy into your life and the lives of other people as well if you wanted to. Now I love the idea of blessing rituals, I've done them myself, I'm actually doing one this full moon coming, which for me is tomorrow night, and they are great just for general positive uplifting energy. If you wanted to, you can include a petition in as well, if you kind of want that blessing to be on a specific aspect of your life. But blessing rituals are a great thing that you can do if you have a new family member, a new child has come into your life, a new relationship, a new marriage. If you have a new friend and you want to bless that kind of friendship, if you just want to bless a space or a person or an item or an object, this kind of working is great to do around a full moon while their energy is still very, very high. So the second thing that you can do are cleansings. Now it's never a bad time to do a cleansing. It's always useful to do cleansings when you can. But during the full moon is a good time to do them, especially if you plan on doing workings in the coming or the half of the cycle. So the lunar cycle is ever-changing energy. There's always a slightly different vibration going on. And if maybe you are done and if you've done what you wanted to do up to the full moon and you're now going to change what you're planning on doing, it's a really good time to do some cleansing workings. It's also really good to do cleansing if you plan on charging items during the full moon, which I'll be talking about in just a minute. There are lots and lots of ways you can cleanse and there's lots and lots of things that you can cleanse depending on what you need. If you feel like you need a really, really deep cleanse, a house cleanse could be the way to go. Literally cleanse your entire house, top to bottom, back to front, out the front door. <laughs> I do love that saying. If you need to do a spiritual cleanse for yourself, you can use smoke. You can also do ritual baths. That's another great thing to do during this phase of the lunar cycle. You can also cleanse items, objects, altars, spaces. If you know that you want to charge your crystals, cleanse them first to get rid of any of that excess energy. If you know you want to do workings with tools, cleanse them first, get rid of anything that's sticking to them, anything that's lingering in them. It's a great time to do it and it's also a great way to remember to do it. It. A lot of us actually often forget to cleanse items until it's probably a little too late. But if you do it every single full moon, that means you know you're going to be cleansing your items at least once a month, which is a great way to kind of regularly clear out that energy that you maybe don't want lingering around. So number three is charging objects. Now, everyone and their grandma knows about the idea of charging crystals under the light of the full moon. It's everywhere. It's on Instagram, it's on Tumblr, it's in books. A lot of people already know about this. But it's not something that you only have to do with crystals. You can charge tools, you can charge items, you can charge jewellery or crystals or even yourself under the full moon energy. 
Now a lot of people will do cleansing alongside this, so they will begin with a spiritual cleanse either of themselves or of their items and objects. They'll very much make a, a ritual out of it. They'll start with a spiritual cleanse before moving on to charging the items. Now I will say, if you have crystals, you don't have to charge them under the light of a full moon. A lot of books will say that you have to charge crystals under full moonlight. You don't. You really don't. Crystals have their own energy. You can just cleanse them and use them as they are. But if you do want to add that full moon amplified positive energy onto the crystals and their pre-existing properties, charging under a full moon can be really, really useful. Now there are a few different ways of doing this. Some people will leave their items outside, so they will have either a cloth or they'll use a tray or a tabletop or something like that and they will lay their items out onto this surface and then allow them to soak in the full moonlight for anywhere up to the full night. It varies between an hour or two up until the full evening while the moon is going to be out. Now, of course, that very much depends on what you're able to do. If you know it's going to rain, having them out all night probably isn't a good idea. But if you do have the ability to leave them out overnight, then it could be a really great way of doing it. Now, not everyone has a safe space where they can leave things outside. I know that I certainly don't. If I left anything outside here, you know damn well it will get nicked. <laughs> if you are in a similar situation to me, you can use window sills as well, and it doesn't matter if the full moonlight doesn't perfectly hit it. Much like how the moon still affects the tides, even when the moon is covered by cloud, the same thing works with crystals, items, objects, and yourself. So it doesn't matter whether there's cloud cover, it doesn't matter if the windowsill doesn't have direct moonlight hitting it, it's about the vibrational energy of this time of the month that is what causes the shift in the crystals, the objects, the items, whatever it might be that you're planning on charging. So that is another great thing to do, especially when it comes to ritual tools. If you have any new ritual tools, it could be a really good time to start cleansing and start charging them. So if you have a new tarot deck, a new oracle deck, a new pendulum, a new set of runes, if you have a new book of shadows and you wand and you athame whatever it might be you can stick it out to charge it this time cleanse it charge it and then you can start working with it in your practice any crystals that you have that you know you want to work with alongside the energies of the full moon so anything that's very positive and amplifying then it could be really good to charge them now so they're almost containing that energy as you go into the rest of the moon cycle now that is another thing you can do, is that if you like working with the full moon energy, even when the full moon isn't present, you can actually store it inside vessels. Crystals are really good for this. I really like using it for its selenite. Quartz is a fantastic one as well. If you charge it with the energy of that specific moon phase, and then you don't discharge that energy, you can then draw on that energy in another working at another time of the month. So if you like working with lunar energy, but don't necessarily like being stuck to the very rigid moon phase. So you realize you want to do a working and you've just missed the moon phase that you needed it in. What you can do is have crystals, objects, items actually store that phase of energy in them that you can then withdraw when you need to do that working for that specific intention. So that's another good thing you can do. If you like working with the full moon but don't need its energy right now, you can actually store some of it for use later, which can be really useful if you don't like the conforming aspect of working with the moon phases. Now it's not just items and objects, if you need to, you can also recharge yourself. It's a really good reset point. Especially if you're feeling very bogged down and drained, doing a spiritual cleanse and then getting outside and just standing in the full moonlight can be really, really refreshing. Whether you believe it's going to spiritually do anything or not, it can just be a really nice feeling to have an energetic cleanse that could be a ritual bath, that could be a smoke cleanse, whatever it is, and then just recharge with the full moon energy. It's almost a, a nice reset to the way you've been feeling for the rest of the month. Now another thing you can do that's often overlooked is water magic. The moon is very closely tied to water. It has such powerful control over our tides and our oceans and yet we often forget that we can be doing water magic, especially at this 
phase of the moon. Now if you've never done elemental workings before it can be really good to start on a specific moon phase just to kind of dip your toe so to speak into the water element magical practice. Now there are lots of things that you can do when it comes to water magic and it's a really great time to be doing it. The first ties into the cleansing aspect and that is ritual baths, spiritual baths. Now a lot of people when they think of spiritual baths they think of cleansing and yes one of the most popular forms of spiritual bath is a cleansing bath but there are others as well. So you can use ritual washes and ritual baths for cleansing, you can also use them for protection, love, luck, money, banishing, you can use them for almost anything. It's just about adding that energy and intention into your life in a different way. So the moon that has just gone, that we've just seen, was a pink moon and a lot of people will have done self-love or romance workings during the pink moon. So at this point people could have done self-love baths but they also could have done blessing baths, protection baths, cleansing baths. At the different full moons you can adapt the type of spiritual bath you want to be doing for what you want to manifest in your life. Now you don't have to have a bath to do this, you can also do spiritual washes. Essentially it's kind of the same idea as a bath except rather than soaking in it you actually pour the water over yourself. So the act of pouring the water over is the act of adding that energy into your life. So it's another way of doing it if you don't have a bath. Don't despair, there are other options if you don't have a giant bath in your house. You don't need one, you can do it in the shower as well. So alongside ritual baths you can energise sigils in water. The idea of destroying sigils in water is one that isn't as often used as destroying them by fire but it is really good for any sigils that are designed to work with emotions and also cleansing. So if you want to cleanse something out of your life, activating a sigil with destruction by water is a really good way of doing it. You can also do it for emotion sigils which is a really good way of doing it. It's just about connecting everything together. The sigil your energy as well as the method that you are going to be destroying it with. And then the last really big aspect of water magic that a lot of people don't do but is really good at this time of the lunar phase is scrying, specifically water scrying. Water scrying is one of the most unusual forms of divination and not that many people actually practice it but it is absolutely fantastic for tapping in to that psychic subconscious energy. Now scrying is very different from tarot, oracle, runes where you have the pre-created meanings for almost anything that you might draw while you're doing a reading. Instead scrying is a method of tapping into the unconscious mind. It's about developing our own psychic intuition and it can be a really great way of adding to your magical practice by being able to kind of tap into this energy. Now the idea of water scrying is that you have a dish, it's often a dark dish if that's possible, and you fill it with water. You then sit in a dimly lit space, often it's lit by candles or it can be lit by the full moonlight, whether inside or outside. And the purpose is, is that you enter into a trance-like state while staring into the water and you pick up on any images, any symbols, any anything that really comes to you out of the water. That could be things you visibly see or things that you subconsciously see and you are then able to tap into that to understand what your subconscious mind is trying to tell you. It's a really, really interesting thing to do. It's really unusual and it's great to do at the full moon because you do have the ability to use the full moon energy and also the light of the full moon to be your light as you are doing the scrying. Now of course not everyone is going to be able to sit outside with a giant bowl scrying under the full moon but it is something that you can do regardless of whether or not you can go outside. You can just use candles to light this practice instead. Now the next is probably the most popular and that is moon water. Now I am going to have a full video coming out on moon water so if you want to find out even more about it and its uses, feel free to go and watch that video, it is coming out soon. But moon water is probably one of the first things that beginner witches actually create. I know that when I started out it was just kind of gaining popularity in books and now it's everywhere. There's Instagram posts, there's Tumblr posts, it's all over Facebook, it's all over YouTube, it is everywhere. And although I have to say it's probably my least used um, item on this list, it can be exceptionally useful if it is something that you're interested in using. 
So the idea of moon water is that it's similar to crystals. It can store that lunar energy that you can then use further on in your magical practice. You can also drink it to add that energy into your life. It's relatively easy and simple to create. Almost anyone can do it. And if you have a refrigerator, you can drink it for up to three days after you've made it. So it is really nice. And it's also a great thing for beginners to start doing, especially when it comes to learning to sense energy and sensing the energy of the different moon phases. Like, it's a really nice thing to just start off with. Now, making moon water is pretty easy. You need a glass, a bottle or a bowl, and you need to fill it with water, preferably distilled water or spring water, something that doesn't have the settling impurities that tap water can have. And then you let it to sit in moonlight. Now, it doesn't have to be in direct moonlight. It can be in indirect moonlight. And then after it's charged, you can then go on to use it in your magical practice. Now, there is a full video on that, as I've mentioned, so I don't want to fill this video up too much on just that one topic, but it is a really great thing to do. It's also good if you're just starting out because it's like a cute little craft thing, and I really liked making it when I was starting out, so I figured other people probably would as well. And then the last thing on this list, number six, is moon meditations. Now, you don't necessarily have to meditate for this one, but it's the idea of taking time to be thoughtful. It's about taking time to look inwards. Now, a lot of people will take time during the dark moon to look inwards, but for some people, the energy of the full moon is really what allows them to really see the things that they need to see that they couldn't see before. It's lit up the things that they maybe didn't notice within their lives. Now, some people will actively do meditation during this time. They will sit and they will enter into a meditative state. Other people will journal or they will colour or they will write their feelings out or they will create music about their emotions. They will do something that enters them into that insightful point where they can really look introspectively about the things that they need to change. So is there something that you need to do that you haven't done? Is there something within yourself that you want to improve? Is there something that needs processing, that needs work? Is there something that you need to do shadow work on? Is there things that need changing? Are there people that you need to talk to, that you need to interact with? What do you need to do to change something for the better within your life? And it's a really great time to do that, especially if you find that the full moon energy has a really calming effect on you. People tend to go either which way. It's either really aggravating and it's so intense that they can't sleep or it's pretty calming. So depending on which side of the spectrum you are, doing this kind of introspective look during meditation, during journeying, during trance work, whatever it might be, is a really great thing to do. And especially at this time, it can be really useful to see what you want to change, what you want to keep, the things that need adapting and all that kind of stuff. It's a really great time to be doing all of that jazz accompanied with jazz hands. <laughs> So anyway, I hope that this was useful for you guys. I hope that there was something on this list that you can do for yourself during your next full moon celebrations, even if you aren't in a coven or even if you aren't in a group that celebrates the Espats. Hopefully you can still find something useful that you can do by yourself or with your family and friends. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to give me a like. It really, really means so much to me. Please let me know what you guys do during full moons. I would absolutely love to know what kind of traditions, celebrations, what do you do during full moons? Is it to celebrate an espat or is it just because you like the full moon? Let me know, I'd love to know. Just type it down in the comment section. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just want to chit chat with the community, please let us know down in the comment section. I always love having a good conversation with you guys down there. I'm always like hearting comments and all that good stuff. I love interacting with you guys. And if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best for his magical content every Wednesday and every Saturday at 6 p.m. So I hope you guys have a marvelous magical day. I hope that you are staying safe and that you are all well, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.